Good day guys, welcome to Barrett Basics. This is part two. So another lure I'm really, really fond of at the moment is the Molex Shad in the 140 for Barra. One of the main reasons I love this bait is you get to fish it on big heavy swim bait rods because the lure itself weighs over two ounces. But the strike you get and the hit you get on these things is second to none. Mess up that timing any spaces where I'm talking to. Swim bait cod. Sana is on the pet and the abrasiveness of the jaw. So straight out of the box, these models of the Molex Shad 140 that I have, they're not the Barra Special model. So the Barra Special model has a heavier gauge top hook and you can leave that top hook on nowadays and fish with that and be confident that it's not going to band out. So for the purpose of this video I'll show you the little things that I like to do on these lures to pimp them. They're not necessary things to do but it's things that I did from the start and with barra fishing everything is confident so if I'm confident in the way that I set up my bait I will always set up my bait that way until I work out a better way. So out of the packet, the models that I have, they come with a small Colorado on that wired belly section. They have a small front treble. They also have the light gauge top hook. So when you finish with these bad boys, they'll look like this and just an all round nasty barra producing lure. <laughs> so we'll start with the combo. So I just run the Smoke S3 and it's the 100 size. I basically, like I said with the jerk baiting video, this is the main reel I use for basically everything except when I'm throwing big giant swim baits, giant glide baits, stuff like that, I'll run the Smoke HD. The rod, again this is in the amped range. This is a swim bait it's a C781 Extra Heavy. But the Extra Heavy is perfect for this two, two ounce sort of, um, you can throw all the way up to four ounce, but I do like to go to the next model up rod for anything bigger than that, just because I don't want to feel like I have to launch it, whereas these things will just send this lure for a mile, which is exactly what you want when you're sitting off long running points. The other beauty about these rods, long butt section for fighting fish, and they're a fairly long rod, so seven foot eight. So when you get that bite, you can really get some purchase on those things and, and get those hooks home and quickly. So the line, I'm running the Sunline Siglon. This is 40 pound, similar with the jerk baiting. I don't like to go too much heavier than that. There's no, there's no need to go any heavier. So when running swim baits, we have had a few reaction bites on this trip, which is not unusual, but by reaction, I mean, they didn't eat it. They hit the lure, it was either stuck on the side of their face, which a few of them have been. They've been stung in the top of the nose with the front hook, which, which means I know they flew in and head butted that thing head first. And when you get in those sorts of bites, the leader doesn't really matter because it's not going in their mouth. But 90% of the time that I have fished these big swim baits, they're choked. I like to run minimum 60 pound in the FC 100. I have gone up as high as 80 depending on the size of the fish and the lake that I'm in, but 60 is fine and you won't get chafed through, you'll land that fish, it just means you will have to cut that off and retie it. So if you're not a big fan of retying your FG, I recommend running a longer than average leader, maybe stretch it out to seven and a half, eight foot a leader, and it'll get you through that whole session with just retying every time you catch a big fish. All right, let's get into how I make this lure you will like this bad boy. One of the first things I do, again, if you have the barren model, you don't have to do this. But one of the first things I'll do is I cut off that light gauge top hook. I'd rather not pin a fish on that point at all and risk losing it than, than have that extra hook point there in the off chance that I'm gonna catch a fish. If you have these two trebles sitting there and that barra sucks it in and spits that out, the chances of this hook catching something if these two didn't, pretty slim. Second little mod. See these two little 
sort of keels, I guess, the, the belly fins of the lure. I like to trim those off, but just taking those fins off, even though they're super soft, take those two off, this thing just gets a really, really good body roll going. And then while you're down this end, take off this little thing. Little Colorado, I don't like leaving it on. I'll just take it off. It takes two seconds to take that off. So we've taken the little flaps off. We've taken the belly Colorado off. Double split ring on the front with the size four decoy split rings. Single split ring on the back, same split ring. The hit you get from these things is intense when you're fishing this lure. And I really want to be able to hit them as hard as I can and know that I have dislodged that lure out of their mouth and into their jaw with this big swim bait rod and not worry about any of my hooks failing. So that size two just fits nicely against the body of this lure. They don't, re they rarely foul up. You do occasionally get them fouled up, but the other side of running the double ring on the front, it gives them the freedom that when they do hang up, they're not tight enough that you can't get, they won't flick back out. They're just, they're that loose that you bump it and they come back out. Rarely do I ever come in where that hook is tangled up with that hook. So attaching this guy, I like to run a 60 pound leader. I run an FG knot from my braid to my leader. The rod itself is seven foot eight. So I basically run sort of, so my FG knot goes about that far in my rod tip and I can hook my lure onto my reel. So you're looking at about seven foot bit over. Um, I always attach these lures with a loop knot. I don't want to impede that action in any way. I want my line to be loose against the head of this lure so it can just rock freely, do its thing. That's about as complicated as it gets, guys, for the Molex Shad. So basically, the retrieve is fairly simple. I just throw it out and wind that thing back in. Keep an eye on your hook points, make sure that all your hooks are super sharp. As I said, if you get that headbutt bite or that cheek swipe bite, you don't want to miss that fish just because you didn't check your hooks on the last one. If you have any other questions about the Molex Shad 140, or if you watched this video and the jerk baiting video and you have another technique that you want to have more information about, or another rig to do with Barramundi you want to have more information out, just write it in the comments below, guys. I'll get back to you on them as soon as possible. If you haven't seen that jerk baiting video, I'll put the card up here so you can watch the jerk baiting video, which is Barra Basics number one. As I think of other things that I do with Barramundi fishing that maybe not everyone else does, I'll upload another video in this series so that you can see just little things that might help you guys out and try and answer a few of the questions that I get on social media a lot. I'll see you on the water. Thank you.